in the last episode I talked about a really dark future, a possible nightmare, and all you have to do to earn it is do what you always do, just do nothing, and you'll have your managed apocalypse. Um, I hope I painted a very dark picture because that's almost definitely what's on the cards if you do nothing. Now here's the alternative picture, almost a utopian picture, a very brief utopia. It's kind of like Thelma and Louise, uh, you don't get to make it across the canyon, but you do have about three seconds of freedom in free fall, uh, free fall towards apocalypse of course. Now, I've often described it in the earlier videos as Catalonia 1936. So what happened in Catalonia 1936 and what's all that about? Okay, so let me start off by describing it, maybe grounding it in something that's relevant to you. So there's something that's always kind of amazed me uh, in America, uh, particularly in conservative America, um, the deep Republican South, say Texas. I've been to barbecues, for example, in Houston, and it amazes me that these people are staunchly anti-socialist, rabidly anti-communist. But I've been to barbecues where everybody is communist. They all chip in. They all have sort of a church barbecue kind of church faith thing and everybody brings a dish everybody helps everybody out Bob does the cooking because he's good at meat on the barbie everybody does their little bit and it all works smashingly and it's weird because that's communism and it's so natural to Texans that are rabid Republicans and far right wing so it's strange from a number of ways because that same kind of community, typically church communities, they will go the nth mile to say if Greg has his roof broken or, you know, tornado weep, sweeps through and somebody's house is knocked down, they'll all chip in. They'll, they'll give their time, they'll give tools, they'll come and help Greg rebuild his roof for free. And they wouldn't dream of accepting any money for it. And yet they staunchly are anti-communist. And that disconnect is a fascinating one for me. And the reason is because of Catalonia in 1936. So what happened there was part of the Spanish Civil War. Uh, what happened, especially in Catalonia, which was industrialized, um, was there was... A rebellion people just got sick of the wage cuts to support this imperialist war in Morocco and then they started recruiting people for this insane war uh, it was just just pure war of aggression um, illegal by any standards and uh, just really done for prestige reasons for this insane patriotic nationalism of Spanish nationalists so the workers in Catalonia just simply rebelled and threw out all the, uh, all the bosses. Now, particularly these were uh, anarcho-syndicalists and communists, um, trade unions. They took over. They took over government. They just uh, ousted uh, all the fascists. Um, so uh, what happened in the wake of that was an amazing thing. And that's what people struggle to understand about anarchism. It's that everything worked. It not only worked, but it worked spectacularly well. People discovered really what it was to be human during that time. And I want to try and popularize that memory as much as possible uh, because it is a blueprint for a possible uh, extinction, uh, a free extinction. Now, if you're an American, say, from South Texas, and you're a Christian, and you've been indoctrinated into debt-based capitalism, and you've been taught that communism is supremely evil for some unknown reason, um, then 
what probably scares you most, although it looks like, say, a church barbecue, uh, when people uh, are free and there are no more buses, uh, what probably gives you the willies is the fact that it looks like it's coerced, but it wasn't. The amazing thing about it was people were absolutely free to choose to join in uh, to this communal activity or not. You had the choice. You could be, you were free to be an individualist if you wanted. You could be as Texan as you wanted. And uh, they would even give you a piece of land. If you didn't want to join in in the collective farm, you, you would, could ask for a piece of land and they would give it to you. They'd only give you as much as you could farm on your own because it wouldn't have been efficient to give you more than that. You weren't allowed to employ workers. There wasn't any money, so you probably couldn't pay them anyway. But if you wanted just your own little libertarian uh, prepper paradise, you could go ahead and, and do it if you wanted. Very few people did because it was such an amazing time and so liberating. Just the, the collective will was an upswell was so fantastic that, that very few people uh, didn't want to get involved. So uh, what eventually happened to this um, <clears throat> amazing experiment in psychology was well in human sociology uh, was it was eventually defeated by the fascists um, Franco General Franco uh, was a general in Morocco uh, and he appealed to uh, Hitler and the Nazis uh, they supplied planes and transported him back from Morocco so he could enter uh, southern Spain and with uh, support from Stalin and Hitler uh, he managed to defeat uh, the Republicans um, in all over Spain and in Catalonia. By uh, about 1939 he, he was uh, the ultimate dictator and Franco lasted until 1975 when, when he died. In all those years if you're a patriotic nationalist, then salute uh, Franco, because he did what uh, has happened to America too. He made Fr uh, Spain into a political and economic backwater poisoned by a cesspool of religion. And that lasted until 1975. He um, systematically murdered about 400,000 people, small, small token amount for a totalitarian, but uh, still amazing amazing outcome from such a fantastic experiment why did it turn out that way it turned out that way because it scared the bejesus out of uh, communists fascists and uh, western style debt-based uh, democra democracies so what the weasel democracies did was step back and try to uh, really do you know, passively make sure that um, the the anarchists in Catalonia were uh, starved out. Uh, the communist Stalin, basically, um, he engineered the fall of communism, uh, the communist factions and the anarchists with them in Catalonia. Um, he essentially decided that Anarchism was so dangerous, this whole idea of freedom or the, the knowledge that things work better without bosses, without managers, without, without uh, religious priests, that uh, he decided that it was far better for his own communist party and communist forces to be overrun by the enemy of all enemies, fascists, uh, rather than have uh, this idea spread around the world. And all three of them. I mean, can you imagine uh, an ideology that fascists, communists and capitalists can unite in unanimity on that it has to be suppressed, wiped out. The knowledge of it has to be expunged from your history books. Absolutely in lockstep, uh, united around this one idea that anarchism cannot happen. So, if you're a prepper, and you like to say, and then law and order will break down and there'll be chaos and anarchy. Please stop using that phrase. K 
chaos is what happens when you mar managed. Anarchy is more productive. It's more socially just. Anarchy is freedom. It's order. It's love. That's what you have without the oppression, the law and order, without the lawmakers. So please don't use the phrase chaos and anarchy. They are not synonyms. They are antonyms. Okay. So I say this because in our extinction, you have the option to have a managed nightmare to be in concentration camps like Franco's concentration camps. They will, of course, be ice concentration camps. There will be FEMA concentration camps. They will be uh, political concentration camps as soon as eco-terrorism starts get going, um, uh, you know, when people realize that we are in uh, this abrupt human extinction event due to climate change. Uh, they will incarcerate people at a tremendous rate. I've mentioned before that even people that are in cubicles are, in a sense, in uh, soft incarceration. There are people in the military which are in hard incarceration. There are people in the prisons which are even harder incarceration. Uh, but all of those things are prepping for death camps. Um, and so, unless you seize your own autonomy, um, yes, yeah, sit back and uh, enjoy Auschwitz. But you have the option. If you steal yourself, be a psychopath for a day, uh, and do the necessary, uh, you can actually have Catalonia 1936. Now, why didn't they have a big purge of all the psychopaths in Catalonia 1936? Well, the reason was they left. They left and went over to the fascist ranks. Um, you don't have that option. The psychopaths are not going anywhere. So there's nowhere for them to defect to. They, they're not going to go and into Belize or sequester themselves somewhere out of the way. Uh, you can't do what Douglas Adams said, just put them on a spaceship and launch them into space. They really are here to stay and they will try and organize uh, things around themselves so things go down exactly the way uh, the good cop bad cop uh, duo the church and state uh, Franco and the Catholic Church uh, will organize it to be that way it's in their blood they know nothing else um, so yeah that's that's again my distinction and then I hope you have a closer look at some of the links that I put below. Uh, they are often things in, in Spanish and kind of anarchic underground videos in French. Uh, very few in English because of what I mentioned. It's been heavily suppressed. Um, but I hope I don't stimulate you to say, well, that's fantastic. I need to learn more about anarchism. You don't. This is all anarchism is. It's no bosses, it's no managers, it's, it's freedom. All these people in the service sector shuffling paper so they can get a piece of paper in, in exchange, just a dollar bill, they all are necessary. All the jobs you're doing are absolutely unnecessary. Uh, so the thing that you have to know about anarchism is simple, it's freedom. All it is is no church, no masters, no financial system. So, no gods, no masters, no money. That's it. It works beautifully. You know that the factories in, in Barcelona, when the fascists actually overran them, they found that they were, they were spotless. They were about twice as efficient as they were under capitalism. Um, and they were so keen to suppress that knowledge that they got these pristine factories, they dismantled them, they expunged them as if they were a virus. And they were a virus. The virus was the idea that people could be free and didn't need cancer. The cancer of fascism, the cancer of bosses, the cancers of management, the cancers of 
all these psychopaths, authoritarians above you. But you don't get Catalonia 1936 for free. I'm sorry, but authoritarian rules, they made the rules. You've got to be uh, a psychopath for a day and get rid of the authoritarians. Their rules, not mine. Now I have to add a little addendum to this video. In an event of synchronicity, which happens so often to me, and I ought to be used to it by now, I went to edit the video and immediately came on this article in New Scientist. Now, I hope you've been getting the gist of what I've been saying in these videos. You cannot come out and say that you have to get violent. You can't propagate violent revolution. It's a felony. And so I can't come out and do anything like that on YouTube. Of course, it's a complete double standard. The same government that says you can't use violence is probably the most violent entity that's ever existed in humankind. The US military, the industrial complex, the world has never seen such a violent organization. But they reserve violence for themselves and little lamb cubs like uh, Stephen Colbert will tell you that, well, violence never achieves anything. It only achieves its opposite, which is kind of strange because basically the fascists, the totalitarian communists have been using violence very, very successfully for 8,000 years. So I beg to differ on that point. Now, I cannot come out and say that you should think hard about applying violence. It is time to get violent if you want to avoid a lot more violence. So you have to be consequentialist, you have to be a psychopath for a day. Because if you don't, if you don't employ a little bit of violence, there will be death camp, Auschwitz, Holocaust type violence because of your neglect. Now, everyone says that they would get in a time machine and come back and shoot Hitler. Well, if you knew what was coming and you had a time machine, then you'd be coming back to round about now in 2019-2020. I don't see anybody shooting anybody. I don't see anybody pulling a trigger. Why? Because you've been domesticated. You've been infantil infantilized. You've been indoctrinated to be a peaceful, docile slave. There are consequences for that. If you don't find your innate primate and its violence within, there are severe consequences around the corner. Now watch the article that I just seen in New Scientist. I'll post it down below. But the gist of it is, is they're doing experiments to zap prisoners' brains with electricity to control their violent urges. Okay, the psychopaths, Dick Cheney, uh, all the people that went into Iraq, uh, Donald Rumsfeld, Condoleezza Rice, all those psychopaths, nothing wrong with them. They're never gonna get electric shocks to control their violent urges. But prisoners are having experiments done to them, zap their brains to control their violent urges. Of course, the violent urges are against uh, an impending extinction event and the psychopaths that caused it and are now managing it. But it's, for some reason, pathological. Where are these experiments being done in? Well, there's the synchronicity. They're being done in Spain.